Hello everyone, welcome to FPV Trick Theory, where we improve our FPV freestyle one battery at a time in short, easy to digest episodes. This is the first video in this series, so we're gonna start with a relatively simple yet nuanced topic, throttle management. So throttle is kind of the foundation of your flying and of freestyle. So mastering the throttle will lead to smoother, more consistent and more engaging flights. So let's see how to do that. Since this is the first episode of this series, I briefly want to cover the concept behind this series. So if you are a musician, not only do you learn songs and pieces, but you also learn music theory, scales, chords, dynamics, character. And I want to do the same thing with FPV. So not only will I be doing trick tutorials, but I will also go over theory and more abstract concepts such as how to use the throttle stick to make your flying look better and how to flow. Because we're gonna be going over more abstract concepts and because it's gonna be faster paced since I shoot everything in one battery, I do recommend you be at least an intermediate pilot to fully grasp these concepts. So by intermediate, I mean be comfortable flying in acro mode, be able to do split S's and power loops. If you're not quite there yet, that's 100% okay. I have another series called How to FPV, which can take you from as beginner as complete noob all the way up to what I call intermediate. So if you're not quite intermediate yet, go watch that series and I'll meet you back here to continue to improve your freestyle. With that out of the way, let's learn how to use the throttle stick. All right, so maybe the biggest concept to go over here is just being smooth with the throttle, which sounds straightforward, but I'll explain a little bit more in detail. So when you first start flying and you're learning how to fly, a lot of times you're just trying to control your altitude and you overcorrect a lot and you go up and down with the throttle stick like this. And you wanna to try to get away from that as much as possible. So you really wanna to try to anticipate the changes in height of the quad and then make micro adjustments with the throttle stick. So it should really look like your throttle stick isn't really moving at all because you're able to make those really small adjustments. And it may take a really conscious effort on your part to try to anticipate what the quad is gonna do. And that's just something you have to do and learn and eventually it becomes second nature. So you don't wanna be going up and down like this. It doesn't look very pleasing. Now, a bad habit that often forms is actually just moving the throttle stick a lot for no reason at all, especially when like going around a corner like so. Uh, it doesn't help you corner. It actually makes things a lot less smooth, especially if you're not careful with your throttle stick. You can like accidentally mix and yaw, or if your quad is tuned badly, you'll have bobbles, and you don't want any of that. And same thing goes for something like a split S. When you pull out, you don't want to just jam on the throttle stick all of a sudden because, once again, if your quad is tuned badly, you're going to get a bunch of prop wash. And it's just not smooth to the viewer. So what you instead want to do is make small changes in the throttle. Everything smooth. Slowly feed in that throttle. Slowly feed it in. And that makes everything look a lot smoother because it is smoother. Slowly feed it in. And it's a lot easier to control uh, any kind of catch in a move because you kind of are giving yourself time to react by moving the throttle stick slower. So if I just jam on the throttle, I just have to anticipate how much the quad's going to accelerate. But if I slowly feed in the throttle, I'm constantly getting feedback as to how much the quad is accelerating. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, another thing that comes along with throttle management is just managing the position of the quad relative to the objects that you're flying around. So, you know, you want to make it look like the quad is going really fast, but I'm flying really fast right now and it doesn't look like the quad is going very fast because I'm really high off the ground. Whereas if I slow down, okay, and then I drop the height of the quad, this looks quite fast because I'm so low to the ground 
the ground is rushing by the camera. So you really want to master those micro adjustments of the throttle so you can fly as close to things as possible because that's going to give the illusion of speed to the viewer. And it's not just flying around like I am now, it goes for tricks as well. So if I do some really big split S over this basketball hoop, it's kind of boring because you're so far away, nothing's really happening in the view of the camera. But if I do a really close one to the basketball hoop, there's a lot more movement going on and it just looks more exciting. So that's something to keep in mind is you really want to try to use as little throttle as possible. Once again, we'll do it with the, the monkey bars. So that was kind of a lot of throttle. Let's give it even more. Okay, so that one was a lot of throttle, pretty boring. Now if we give just a little bit of throttle. That one was sloppy, we'll do another one. Everything happens a little bit faster and everything's closer to the camera, so that gives that feeling of excitement. So to recap, basically the two main points here are just try to be as smooth on the throttle as possible fly as close to objects as possible, and also use as little throttle as possible to execute tricks because it makes them seem more interesting than they maybe would be otherwise if you're using a lot of throttle. That is it for the first episode of FPV Trick Theory. I hope you guys learned something from the video or at least enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. Let me know in the comments what other tricks or concepts you would like to see me cover in future episodes. And if you can't get enough of me here on YouTube, give me a follow on Instagram. Last but not least, if you get value out of these videos, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Thanks for watching.